Have you ever wondered what it was like to watch a suspenseful thriller in the early days of cinema? Dr. X, a 1932 movie directed by Michael Curtis, offers a captivating glimpse into the world of old school horror. When was the first time you watched this movie, and what did you think of it? As we delve into the intriguing world of Dr. X, we invite you to share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this film. We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Now, let's uncover some random facts about this cinematic classic. Dr. X is known for its pioneering use of two-strip technicolor, adding an eerie, otherworldly quality to the visuals. The film's plot revolves around a series of gruesome murders, a mysterious doctor, and a hidden laboratory, all creating an atmosphere of suspense and intrigue. What's your take on this vintage gem? Share your thoughts and memories with us, and let's continue the conversation. Stay tuned for more interesting insights into the world of cinema. Dr. X, released in 1932 and directed by Michael Curtis, is a classic horror film that stands out in cinematic history for its innovative blend of horror and science fiction. Set in New York, the story revolves around a series of gruesome murders in which the victims are left with their flesh partially eaten. Dr. Xavier, a brilliant and enigmatic scientist, is brought in to assist the police in solving these heinous crimes. As the investigation unfolds, Dr. Xavier's unorthodox methods, such as using a revolutionary device called the synthetic flesh, draw viewers into a world of macabre experimentation and suspense. The film features iconic characters like Dr. Xavier, a character emblematic of the mad scientist archetype, and the eerie reporter Lee Taylor, who becomes an integral part of the narrative. With its dark, atmospheric cinematography and a gripping storyline, Dr. X showcases a unique style that combines elements of horror and science fiction, setting a precedent for future films of this genre. Dr. X left an indelible mark on popular culture, influencing subsequent horror and sci-fi movies with its pioneering approach to the genre. Its legacy endures as a testament to early horror cinema's creativity and daring storytelling. In 1932, the movie Dr. X was released. Michael Curtis, the director of the film, famously said, This will make your blood curl. The film is notable for having both color and black and white versions, contrary to Technicolor's directive. Ray Renahan shot the color version, while Richard Towers was responsible for the black and white one. The two versions featured distinct camera angles, with the Technicolor version prioritizing better compositions in certain scenes. Notably, this included scenes with Lee Tracy and Mee Bush in a house of prostitution, and a sequence with Tracy in a skeleton room. Before it hit the big screen, Dr. X was a play with a brief run on Broadway in 1931, totaling 80 performances at the Hudson Theater. Dr. X, a 1932 movie, is notable for being Lionel Atwell's first major film. Atwell's performance in this early role set the stage for his successful career in Hollywood. The film also gained recognition for its use of the improved Technicolor 2 strip Process 3, which was a significant advancement in color technology at the time. This innovation enhanced the color and clarity of the film, making it a visual standout in 1932. Dr. X was the second Warner Bros. production to employ this technology, following Manhattan Parade in 1931. However, due to its expense and limited box office success, Warner Bros. and other studios eventually abandoned this format. In an amusing scene in the movie, the main character playfully refers to the cat house piano player as Ratchmaninoff and inquires about the prelude. To the surprise of the characters and the audience, the piano player flawlessly performs Ratchmaninoff's famous prelude in C-sharp minor. This unexpected musical moment adds a touch of humor and charm to the film. Dr. X remains a noteworthy film in the history of cinema, not only for its technical innovations, but also for the debut of Lionel Atwell in a major film role. The film's unique blend of horror, mystery, and comedy makes it an intriguing piece of early Hollywood history. Dr. X, a 1932 movie, is not just a classic in the world of horror films, but also holds a unique place in cinematic history. Here's an interesting fact. For a time, Warner Brothers did not have a print of the original Technicolor version, and it was assumed to be lost. 
The Technicolor version was finally discovered in the private collection of studio head Jack L. Warner after his death in 1978, and restored by the UCLA archives. This discovery marked a significant moment in the film's history. It allowed audiences to experience the movie in its original color form, providing a new perspective on the visual elements that contributed to the film's eerie atmosphere. This restoration effort ensured that the legacy of Dr. X would continue to captivate and terrify audiences for years to come. The film's impact even transcended the screen, as Jeff Martin of the band Racer X wrote the song Dr. X about this movie. The lyrics, including a scream from Faye, a ray of moon, pay homage to the iconic horror actress Faye Ray, and the moonlit scenes that added to the film's eerie ambience. Dr. X remains a testament to the enduring power of classic horror cinema, and the recovery of its original Technicolor version serves as a reminder of the importance of preserving cinematic treasures for future generations to enjoy. The black and white version of the 1932 movie Dr. X was distributed to smaller markets, while the more expensive Technicolor prints were reserved for theaters in large cities. This distribution strategy aimed to maximize the film's impact in major urban areas, where the colorful and visually striking Technicolor could draw larger audiences. Dr. X is known for its innovative use of two-color Technicolor, which added to its appeal as a horror film of its time. The film's plot revolves around a series of gruesome murders, with a unique twist that becomes even more captivating in Technicolor. This distribution tactic was a smart move, ensuring that the movie made a memorable impact on audiences in major cities. In addition to its distribution strategy, Dr. X is also notable for its connection to actress Faye Ray. Ray, who played a prominent role in the film, later remarked on her experience working with director Michael Curtis. She recalled how Curtis would pace up and down in front of the actors during their lunch hour, attempting to intimidate them. This tactic, while unconventional, may have contributed to the intense and suspenseful atmosphere that the film is known for. Interestingly, Curtis employed a similar approach when shooting Mystery of the Wax Museum, another film starring Faye Ray. This behind-the-scenes insight provides a glimpse into the director's unique methods and the collaboration between Ray and Curtis on multiple projects. Furthermore, Dr. X introduces a sinister character known as the Moon Killer with allusions to a series of cannibalistic murders. These references are believed to be thinly disguised connections to the real-life criminal Albert Fish, also known as the Moon Maniac. Fish's cannibalistic crime spree occurred from 1924 to 1932, overlapping with the release of the film. This dark and chilling inspiration for the film's antagonist adds an unsettling layer of realism to the horror narrative and showcases the influence of true crime events on the entertainment industry during that era. In conclusion, the 1932 movie Dr. X stands out not only for its distribution strategy, but also for the unique behind-the-scenes experiences of the cast and crew, as recalled by Fay Ray. Additionally, the film's connection to the Moon Killer murders, likely inspired by the infamous Albert Fish, adds a disturbing layer of authenticity to the storyline. Dr. X remains a significant piece of cinematic history, known for its innovative use of Technicolor and its contribution to the horror genre of its time. As we draw the curtains on this cinematic journey back to 1932 and the enigmatic world of Dr. X, I encourage you to take a moment to reflect on your personal connection with this timeless classic. This movie, with its blend of mystery, horror, and science fiction, has left an indelible mark on the annals of film history. The eerie atmosphere, the groundbreaking use of two-strip Technicolor, and the unforgettable performances by the cast all contribute to its enduring appeal. What memories or thoughts has Dr. X stirred within you? Was it the first classic horror film you ever watched? Perhaps it's the vivid characters or the atmospheric cinematography that has stayed with you. Whatever it may be, we'd love to hear about your unique connection to this cinematic gem. Share your favorite moments, the scenes that sent shivers down your spine, or the characters that have haunted your dreams. Let's keep the spirit of Dr. X alive by celebrating our shared fascination with this exceptional piece of cinema. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of the macabre and mysterious. Your time and interest are greatly appreciated. Until we meet again, keep the thrill of Dr. X close to your heart and continue to explore the magic of classic cinema.